The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11550 in the name of Jim Hume on one step closer to trains at rest in East London. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Jim Hume to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Hume. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I am delighted, of course, to be hosting this afternoon's members' debate which I'm even more delighted to say marks a key moment in the long-running campaign to bring trains to Reston and East Linton. The campaign to get rail services to Reston and East Linton has over the years quite rightly received widespread support from residents and community councils. It's attracted cross-party support uh, from MSPs also, and it's been supported across boundaries by both East Lothian and Scottish Borders Councils. More recently, Scottish Borders Council increased its financial commitment to the project to £1.28 million. Such is the social and economic case for the reinstatement of rail services at Reston. Deputy Presiding Officer, the tenacity of the Rail Action Group East of Scotland members, or RAGES as we all know them, is immense and is without any shadow of a doubt that their sheer hard work, determination and savvy campaigning has kept this issue in the spotlight across changing Holyrood and council administrations since they were set up back in 1999. The RAGES Chairman Tom Thorburn, Vice Chairman Barry Forrest, Secretary Russell Darling and all the committee members have campaigned tirelessly to keep rail services on the agenda. That hard work is paying off. The RAGES team are an exemplar of community campaigning and I'm pleased to say that we're in the presence of this campaigning tour de force with some of the RAGES team here in the public gallery today. I hope this debate lives up to their expectations and I'm sure my MSP colleagues will of course join me in welcoming them to this Scottish Parliament. To achieve rail services for communities across coastal Berwickshire and rural East Lothian is historic and I welcomed the news from Keith Brown in his previous post as Transport Minister that a two-hourly service in the ScotRail franchise has been agreed, with trains at Reston and East Linton from December 2016. I hope that the new Minister, of course, will be in a position to echo that commitment and, of course, look forward to hearing from him on that. I'm pleased that good progress is being made on the joint bid to the Scottish Stations Fund by uh, Scottish Borders Council. Council <coughs> East Lothian Council and Sestrans. And again, I welcomed Keith Brown's earlier positive comments on that bid, and I, of course, again hope that this new minister will also look favourably on that submission. In time, it will be important to see an affordable pricing structure for passengers with a timetable that works for commuters and tourists alike. More immediately, a firm timetable and deadline for construction works is an imperative, and again, I look forward to hearing from the minister on that. And of course, I welcome the Minister to his new uh, position. I hinted at the length of time this campaign has been running in 2002. Tom Thorburn of Rages and Todd Ted Clement of the Reston and Auchincrow Community Council took a petition to the Scottish Parliament to reinstate services at Reston and East Linton. I have since been pleased to fully support Rages in their work to get real services at Reston and East Linton. Certainly, it is clear from feasibility studies that there will be significant socio-economic benefits. On the other side of the borders, work is underway on the Waverley Rail link, which will also benefit uh, not just the borders, but Mid Lothian and, of course, Edinburgh. As work began re recently on laying track, Alex Salmond himself set out his vision of one million passengers using this service annually. The two projects are, of course, very different. But this sentiment does underline the promise of what benefit rail services bring to our communities, both in terms of inward investment and the tourist economy. And this in turn reflects our wish for what we want to see happen at Reston and East Linton. Personally, I'd like to see the Waverley line, of course, extended into Hoyke and beyond to join up with Carlisle. And I could see no reason why the Scottish Government should not commit to at least a feasibility study in light of the former First Minister's ambitious vision. But that discussion is, of course, for another day. Today is about Reston and East Linton. Deputy Presiding Officer, our rural and coastal areas uh, can often be left behind when it comes to investment. Our coastal towns and villages, traditionally reliant on fishing, have in recent years had to diversify in a changing economy. Eyemouth, I'm pleased to say, is still a busy working port, servicing fishing and commercial fleets, 
and over the years an increase in tourism activities is bringing visitors into the town and the wider Berwickshire County with fantastic attractions along the coastline, St Abbs and Coldingham just to name a couple. It is easy to argue the need for trains to rest in East Linton. Such a move will make the area more attractive to young people and new business. Population alone justifies the rail service and it will help people out of cars and perhaps even help Scotland meet its climate change targets also. Reston could serve a population of roughly 10,000 in the eastern part of the borders, and East Linton will be a welcome addition when we know that East Lothian's population is projected to see the biggest increase across Scotland at 33% by 2035. Presiding officer, Deputy Presiding Officer, it is not an overestimation to say that today's debate marks a seminal moment for rail travel in South Scotland. As work continues apace on the Waverley Line in the east, we are now tantalisingly within touching distance of train services at Reston and East Linton. I pay tribute again to Rage's members for leading on this important local issue. They are they are an impressive machine but, who have been behind this campaign, who year after year have kept up the momentum, and I am sure MSPs from across the Chamber will agree with me that it is they who deserve the credit for bringing rail services back to Reston and East Linton. Many thanks. <clears throat> I now call on Chick Brodie to be followed by Ian Gray. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. May I uh, thank uh, Jim Hume for bringing this debate uh, forward uh, this afternoon. The campaign for additional services in East Lothian the borders has been ongoing for a while since the first East Lothian a rail study in 1999. Mr Brodie, could, like could you lift up your microphone, please? Right. Many thanks. And I also would like to pay credit uh, to the Rail Action Group East Scotland for its role in the campaign. Rages was formally established at an inaugural meeting in Dunbar on the 13th of January 1999 and has been campaigning for the reopening of East Linton and Reston stations uh, since then. In 2008, a steering group was established under the auspices of East Lothian Council, bringing together MSPs and councillors from all parties to take forward and coordinate these desirable plans. Sestran has also been instrumental in moving this uh, project forward. I believe the cross-party approach has proven to be very successful in getting us to the stage where we are today, and I know uh, Jim Hume agrees with that. In the announcement by Keith Brown, last week that the new train stations for East Linton and Reston were a step closer was uh, very welcome. Uh, services written into the next franchise include the two hourly service between Edinburgh and Berwick with timing for stops at these stations as part of the planned timetable and we'll see trains running through both stations we hope as soon as December 2016. This as I say is a huge step forward towards the realisation of these services and shows a real commitment from the government. This provides a real investment and new stations elsewhere have been a driver for economic regeneration, bringing jobs, investment and, and social opportunities for communities. The Scottish Stations Investment Fund was launched in April 2012 to provide the £30 million fund to support uh, new railway stations and existing station refurbishments in Scotland. That fund is now awaiting further details from the uh, South East Scotland Regional Transport Partnership and East Lothian Scottish Borders Council for the funding application, which will bring these new stations uh, to reality. Deputy Presiding Officer, investment in the stations will certainly encourage alternatives to private car use, uh, contributing to the government's uh, ambitious uh, uh, targets for the reduction uh, of greenhouse gases. And as I said, evidence from recent rail openings in Scotland suggests that passenger use often far exceeds the forecasts. One of the recent openings was the line from Edinburgh to Bathgate, which in 1986 was forecast to carry over a quarter of a million passengers per annum, but by 1989, usage had already exceeded one million per annum. The area has a high proportion, Berwickshire area has a high proportion of residents working in typically lower paid sectors uh, and areas like Eyemouth who have uh, deprived settlements in, in the Scottish borders according to the Scottish indices of multiple deprivation. Eyemouth has also been separately identified as being among the most 
vulnerable rural communities in Scotland. And opening up a resident station will provide new employment opportunities to residents in Berwickshire and subsequent economic uh, benefits. Deputy Presiding Officer, there is, as we've heard, strong support from local businesses for the introduction of the new rail service and stations. And this adds to the very strong support provided by a local stakeholder, community councils, and of course, elected uh, representatives. And finally, Presiding Officer, I want to close with a quote from Rage's Chairman, Tom Thorburn, uh, following last week's announcement. He said, and I quote, this is terrific news for our area and will be of huge benefit, huge benefit to a whole range of people and businesses, namely those wishing to access jobs in Edinburgh. Students being able to commute for their tertiary education at QMU, Edinburgh, etc., and the ability to take in the theatre and sporting fixtures, fixtures and tourist access to our areas from other parts of the country. Let's make sure, let's make sure that these benefits are fully realised. Thank you. Thank you. I now call Ian Gray to be followed by Alex Johnson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And let me begin by adding my congratulations to Jim Hume for uh, obtaining today's debate. Jim and I have uh, worked together uh, on this campaign uh, over the years. Um, I, I would say, though, uh, it's not the best day for me for him to uh, have got this debate. And with your forbearance, uh, I, I will apologise to colleagues and the Minister in particular that I do have to uh, leave a little early for a Smith-related uh, engagement, so I apologise for that. But I did very much want to take part in this debate because this is an important campaign uh, in East Lothian and I know in uh, the borders too. Uh, the inclusion uh, of a proper local service uh, between Edinburgh and Berwick, stopping at new or restored stations at Reston and East Linton, uh, is a victory for common sense and a victory for persistence. It is a victory for common sense because in my constituency, uh, I, I have uh, one community, Dunbar, which has a working uh, railway station, uh, but has no uh, proper local service. And uh, my constituents in Dunbar uh, depend uh, for train services on uh, the East Coast main line, uh, which sometimes stops at Dunbar and sometimes doesn't. Uh, stop at Dunbar, depending uh, on the timetable. Uh, it is a ridiculous position. But even more ridiculous has been the situation of constituents living in East Linton, where the station was closed many years ago, uh, and for whom they daily see trains run through their community, but none of them stop at all, and they have no opportunity of using those services. It's simple common sense that these two communities, and this is true of Reston as well, of course, uh, should have a proper local rail service. It is a victory for persistence too, particularly the persistence of the local uh, rail campaign, which Mr Hume uh, paid tribute to, as did uh, Mr Brodie, the local campaign uh, rages. Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, uh, Mr Hume uh, listed uh, some of the stalwarts of rages. These are some of the politest and most courteous uh, people one could ever do business with. But, Deputy Presiding Officer, their acronym is not RAGES for no reason. For years they have raged against the argument which said it was not possible to reinstate services to these communities. They have raged against arguments which said that there were not enough train movements to let it happen. And they have raged against arguments which significantly underestimated the potential passenger numbers on those services, and they have won every one of those arguments. Persistence, too, on the part of East Lothian Council, along with Scottish Borders Council, uh, who in the past have provided the resources, for example, uh, for the STAG, uh, the, the original uh, STAG assessment, uh, and have now, as others have said, committed significant resources to actually reopening the stations. Persistence, too, on the part of local politicians, such as Councillor Norman Hampshire, uh, in Dunbar. And I am also happy to acknowledge the role played in this uh, uh, by the Minister's predecessor, Keith Brown, who did respond very positively to the representations uh, made to him and deserves credit for the inclusion of these services uh, in the franchise. This has been a gradual victory. Some ScotRail services have been provided uh, to Dunbar. We have now uh, uh, the prospect of a two-hourly service. Uh, we still have uh, two stations to build to make it happen. My message to the new minister is this. 
Rages will stay on the case, make no mistake, and they will not rest, nor will we, until this victory is finally complete and literally on track. Thank you. I now call Alex Johnson to be followed by Anne McTaggart. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would like to begin by uh, thanking Jim Hume for bringing this matter for discussion uh, before Parliament today. The issue of uh, opening railway stations is something which will be increasingly uh, on our agenda over the years because the case can be made so effectively with each one that opens. But I also have to take the opportunity to apologise for being a last-minute substitute in this debate since local member John Lamont has been called away on a constituency matter. And as a consequence, he was extremely keen that I take the opportunity to express his support for the reopening of the stations at Reston and East Linton uh, and his continued support as we move forward to achieve this objective once and for all. The fact is that uh, evidence has been mounting for many, many years that a little investment can go a very long way when it comes to improving our rail services. Chick Brody has spoken about the Airdrie Bathgate line, but I have a local experience in the North East which I think underlines the success of this kind of action uh, even more so, and that was the opening of the Lawrence Kirk station, which is also uh, placed right on the East Coast main line, uh, some 30 miles south of Aberdeen. Now, the case for that station to be reopened was one that was made consistently over a period of time. Uh, and while we thought the case had been successfully made, no action was taken uh, by government in the early part uh, of the last decade. However, one of the first actions of the SNP government when it came to power in 2007 uh, and the minister uh, of the day, uh, who was Alec Neil, uh, took the opportunity to take that for project forward and was himself very proud to come along and uh, participate in the opening of the station when it eventually happened. The business case for that station opening had been made, but Lawrence Kirk rewrote the books when it comes to business case. The number of passengers has vastly exceeded that that was originally expected, and Lawrence Kirk is now experiencing all the consequent problems of having better transport links, given that there are now huge applications to build additional houses in the area, and people want to live there because there is a station and there is a direct rail service to Aberdeen for those who want to work there, and to Edinburgh and Glasgow and the Central Belt for those who want to move south. The fact is that if we provide services, people will use them. Uh, the evidence is there all around Scotland, and the decision to go ahead with the reopening of these two stations will, I believe, provide more of the essential uh, information required to justify many more business cases across Scotland. So, as the Minister takes this forward, let him be well warned that success breeds success and he's going to have to budget for a few more like these. Thank you. And I now call Anne McTaggart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And from the outset, I would like to welcome um, Derek Mackay to his new position, new ministerial role, and just to say that I'm missing you already from local government. Um, and also to thank Jim Hume, um, MSP, for recognising in this motion a great example of the Scottish Government doing its job. The motion before us today recognises a simple matter where the Scottish Government has worked um, to directly benefit the people of the eastern borderlands. The creation of a bi-early service from Berwick-upon-Tweed to Edinburgh is an amazing way of directly helping Scottish people, as we have seen or have, have been sent to this Parliament to do so. Sometimes we wonder. By opening this service, a whole host of benefits are created for the eastern borderlands and the commuters who live there. Because of the service, it is realistic for people living in towns near the stations to come into Edinburgh for work and bring the money back into their own communities, where it was previously difficult to do so. In addition, the increased traffic makes the areas around the station centres of the region of, for the businesses to open and people to live in particularly for the areas around East Linton and Reston, which have had train stations sitting idly for nearly 50 years. The reactivated rail stations will bring in money and commerce where it has been missing. 
All of this spells out economic prosperity for the Borderlands and the Scottish people who live there. This opportunity for benefit was clearly not missed by the local activists who, act, who a, advocated sorry, for this action by the Scottish Government and succeeded. And I'm not quite sure if, if the name did have something to do with that. Um, I'm sure I would be afraid of it as well, Regis. Especially when times are still hard for many families, actions such as these, which put money directly into the projects which benefit people, are what we need to see more of. It should come as no surprise to the Chamber that this motion brought forward by Jim Hume has been able to receive cross-party support. Although the various parties of the Parliament do not always agree, and if anybody was in earlier would testify to that. When it comes to measures like promoting prosperity and commerce in Scotland, we are able to get together and do amazing things. I sincerely hope that this spirit of cooperation continues to exist in the Parliament so that we may work as a group to benefit our constituents and towards a stronger, more prosperous, prosperous Scotland. In conclusion, President Officer, I would like to thank Jim Hume, again, for bringing this motion before us, not only because of the support, the work that the Scottish Government has done in opening up the, rail sta the railway stations for the benefit of the community, but also because this motion exemplifies the type of cross-party work that we could do and what we should do in this Parliament. Thank you. Um, can I now invite Derek Mackay to respond to the debate, Minister, around seven minutes. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the members for their very warm and generous welcome to my new post of Transport and the Islands. And I appreciate the keen interest shown by a number of parties in the Chamber to this particular issue. Uh, some of the contributions I could have more readily and easily understood than others in terms of the geography that's represented. And also added to the fact I'm obviously intimidated by my ministerial colleague sitting to my left, who's also got a very keen uh, interest in this issue, as well as the other members who have certainly taken forward this very important local cause. And it's in that uh, tone that I would congratulate Jim Hume uh, in securing this uh, debate. It is an important issue uh, to the communities in East Lothian and the Scottish borders. Now, the Scottish Government's record in opening new stations uh, as broadcast and explained by uh, Alec Johnston uh, shows uh, just uh, how important it is uh, to, to the government. A record stands for itself. Uh, since 2007, six new stations have been built and nine more are due to be opened as part of the Borders Rail project. We're committed to supporting major projects and improvements to infrastructure and services across the network to contribute to sustainable economic growth. This is reflected in an ambitious £5 billion package of funding and investment until 2019. And we're delivering the Borders Railway, the longest new domestic railway to be constructed in Britain for over 100 years, on time and within budget. Next year, as we all know, we will have two new exciting rail franchises in operation. These franchises build on the feedback from passengers to the Rail 2014 consultation and the results of the National Rail Passenger Surveys. And these point to the need for an efficient, reliable and value-for-money service for Scotland's passengers. As such, we have secured contracts which reflect a desire that the franchise should put the passenger first, contribute to the overall economy and build on the successes of the current franchise. The successful bidder's proposal satisfies these requirements and more. And they underline this Government's commitment to providing enhanced rail services across Scotland. We will see the introduction of trains more suited to the demands of intercity travel with faster journey times, improved facilities, a galley catering and more comfort for passengers on services. And we will deliver value for money, offering passengers a £5 advance fare between any two cities, together with other proposals such as the Club 50 and reduced travel for uh, job seekers and the newly employed. This is in addition to the commitment by Scottish Ministers to restrict fare increases, increases sorry, uh, which will further improve the appeal of rail and encourage modal shift. The borders will also benefit from being part of the great scenic railways of Scotland. This will market Scotland's scenery, its heritage and its tourist attractions to a wider audience. 
and there will be special steam services to promote local attractions and grow tourism. I hope that community rail groups, local businesses and the wider rail industry engage with the Belial Scott Rail to maximise the opportunities arising from these initiatives. Mr Brown, my predecessor, was delighted to have secured services in the new Scott Rail franchise, which will accommodate stops at Reston and East Linton. This is scheduled to be a two-hourly service between Edinburgh and Berwick, and I'm sure we can all agree that it is a major step forward in bringing these stations back to life. We have been open and responsive to the representations of East Lothian Council, the Scottish Borders Council, Sestrand and Rages, and appreciate the work that they have completed to date. East Lothian has a growing population. A new rail service will help to deliver sustainable economic growth and reduce the impact on the road network. In Berwickshire, the key issues are accessibility and social exclusion. Crucially, the proposed new services and new station will provide improved access to work and education opportunities and will be a driver for economic regeneration. The benefits that these services will bring are evident to all. The final, ele the final element still to be put in place is the capital funding for the stations. We of course recognise the importance of infrastructure to sustaining our economy, providing access to opportunities and bringing our communities closer together and our investments, those we have delivered, those we are in the midst of constructing and those for which we have detailed plans confirm our commitment to improving Scotland's infrastructure. And that commitment is backed by our £30 million Scottish Stations Fund, which was announced in June 2012 as part of Scottish Minister's high-level output specification. This fund is designed to lever in third-party funding to provide new and improved stations and gives East Lothian and the Scottish Borders Councils the opportunity to achieve additional funding for the stations just as it was designed to do. Their bid is currently under consideration and a decision will be made once Network Rail have completed the scope and design work for each of these stations and I look forward to seeing this progressed as soon as possible. So in conclusion, I'm proud of our, of course. Jim Hume. For intervening when he, when he was just about to uh, finish his speech there, but would the, the Minister be able to give us, I um, oh, can't get away from uh, the puns there, but a, a timetable on, on uh, such a decision? Minister? I'm happy to write to the member with the detail on how we will consider that and then in return with a, a target date, because I want to be transparent about the options uh, open to us and make sure that locals are informed of likely progress. We will appreciate in my first week in the job there will be much to be considered, uh, including waiting for the information from Network Rail to properly consider this, cost it and ensure that what we do is credible and beyond uh, any challenge. So in conclusion, I am proud of this impressive record of continued investment in transport and improving accessibility to the rail network across Scotland. This investment continues to create employment, it continues to stimulate growth and it continues to create conditions of advantage and opportunity for Scottish communities. And I encourage all of those working towards the opening of Reston and East Linton stations to maintain that momentum and impetus uh, with these new services because they will provide great support in realising uh, the, the goal and bringing the new stations uh, to fruition and the benefit of public transport for all. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes Jim Hume's debate, One Step Closer to Trains at Reston in East Linton. And I now suspend this meeting until 2pm. <laughs>